you requested. Let's get started with day two of the Great Pottery Throwdown. Welcome back, potters. For this week's main make challenge, the judges would like you to slab build a personal keepsake box that has a smaller hidden secret box inside. Now we want the boxes to reflect a passion of yours. And your outer lid needs to be disguised. We don't want to see where it is. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that one of my greatest passions is DIY. Pretty much any DIY craft, I like to get my hands dirty on. But one that I love in particular is textiles. So I decided that my keepsake box would be a textile themed treasure box for my pin cushion, which coincidentally I also made. The outer box is going to be a spool of thread. I love collecting these little wooden spools of thread from thrift stores. I've been collecting them for a really long time. I use the thread, but um, I also keep them once they're empty too. I just think they're really cool objects. The plan is that the side of the spool is going to lift off and inside there will be a second box, which will be a ball of yarn. I'm not a very good knitter, but I really love to crochet and I'm currently working on a little granny square blanket that I'm using this yarn for. So in order to make these boxes look as realistic as possible, I'm going to be using my extruder. However, if you want to make this project at home and you don't have an extruder, that's fine. You can also just roll out the coils. That will work just as well. The reason I'm using an extruder is because it's gonna help a lot with the speed of the make and also it's going to make my coils a lot more consistent. And your time starts now. So I'm trying to calculate the size of my thread spool and I measured the circumference of the yarn ball. However, I'm not sure how helpful that really is because I need to account for the additional yarn that I'm going to be adding on top of that sphere. Anyway, the measurement was 47 centimeters. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just round way up to 60 centimeters. Or should I not? Let's, let's round up to 57, 10 additional centimeters. But what I really want to do is I want to maintain the proportions of this. So that means we need to do a little bit of math. If we have the circumference being 57, diameter equals circumference pi. No, circumference equals diameter pi. So it's 57 divided by pi will be our diameter, 18. Okay, that means our spool is going to be 18 centimeters wide, which is like this. Seems tight. If it doesn't fit, there will be consequences. <laughs> so this part is easy. We just need to do a ratio. The actual diameter is 2.5, 2.5, and we want it to become 18. And then the height is three. This is easy. That means we need to cross multiply and solve for x. So 18 times three equals 54 and divide by 2.5 equals 21.6. So what that means is that our height of our spool, including the additional slabs at the end are needing to be 21.6 in order for it to look proportional. However, I am going to make my slabs at each end. They are going to be one centimeter thick. So my slab for making the body of the spool needs to be 21.6 minus two centimeters, which is going to be 19.6. Yes, I did just use the calculator for that. 
Now, one more thing is I need to add one additional centimeter to the circumference for the overlap. So instead of 57, it's going to actually be 58. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a slab that is 58 centimeters by 19.6 centimeters. Okay? Well, this is nowhere near long enough, but you know, instead of wasting this slab, like it's plenty wide enough. So I'm going to just roll another slab and then we can attach them together. Guys, I got this new tool and I used it once already. And so far it works really good. This is really cool. Okay, we have our long ass slab. So I want to say that I was wrong. <laughs> Two people reached out to me, one person on Instagram and one person on YouTube, and they sent me the actual rules. I didn't think to look online what the actual rules for pottery throwdown was. It's very clear in the description there that they don't actually complete this in a weekend. I have to admit, right after I posted that video, I watched the second episode and they said like 24 hour firing and I was like, that doesn't make sense. I think I'm wrong. So I was definitely wrong about the timeline. Sorry about that. <laughs> and in light of that, I am going to take my time with this one. I want to make the best thing that I can make. I am going to follow their, you know, six hour guideline here, but I'm not going to speed dry. I'm not going to um, fire too quickly these pots because that's just silly. My last job for the day is to prepare the remaining parts so that they can firm up overnight. I'm rolling two one and a half centimeter slabs for the ends of my spool. I'm going to dry them out between bats lined with newspaper so that they will dry to leather hard perfectly flat overnight. Next I'm preparing the parts for the locking mechanism. One side I can attach right away to the spool body and the other I will dry flat between bats. These pieces are both a half centimeter thick. With the spool parts finished, I can move on to the yarn ball. I'm attaching a slab to one side to act as a gallery. I'll let that dry out overnight so it stays flat and then I'll cut out the excess. Then I rolled a flat, narrow slab to attach to the other side to act as a flange that will be inserted into the gallery. Okay friends, it's the next day and I think everything dried pretty well. Here's our spool of thread. I should flip it. So this is gonna fit in. I need to cut a hole in this so that it fits in.
So adding this extra slab in the inside was totally uh, pointless in the end because I ended up cutting it completely out so that this would fit, but it fits. So now that this is fitting together well, I'm going to switch gears over to the spool. I think I need to add the locking mechanism. This piece I'm not feeling super confident about. We'll see how it goes. So this is theoretically what I'm gonna cut out, so all of this part. And it's gonna have these tabs. So if you're gonna do something like this, do not forget to add space for the thickness of the clay. That's what this little ring is about. Okay, now I need to trace through this. Theoretically, it's the same as this, but I feel better tracing it again because, you know, I'm not cutting things perfectly. Then I'll have a perfect outline. I think something that I'm also going to do that I'm just noticing would be a good idea is these tabs are at like a really sharp angle right now. So I fear that they're going to just fall in. So I'm going to just add a little coil along there to reinforce it. I don't know how to explain how I made this. There was no plan. It was very confusing, let me just say that. But it fits. See how it works? So if it's turned like this, you won't be able to open it. But if it's turned like this, you can open it. Here's the deal. This is the end, the spool end. And this is also going to be the lid. This locking thing needs to be attached to this, but obviously it needs to be elevated a little bit so we can slip past this part. Like it needs to be elevated at least the thickness of this part so we can go underneath. Now I'm going to build up a coil. This is the part where I'm kind of nervous. And then this needs to go on here, but I need to firm this up enough so that the tabs aren't going to start sagging because it's really important that the tabs stay as straight as possible. Maybe I can prop them up or something. And I'm gonna do all this before I cut out the actual shape because I wanna make sure this is perfectly centered. Um, and I just, I feel like it's easier to do that afterwards. So because this clay is fresh, I need this to firm up a little bit before I can add the locking mechanism. So I think I'm going to just put it in front of the fan for a little bit. This is dry enough. So I'm thinking this needs to be about one centimeter. Very short. Let's leave it for now. 
I think what we can do now is attach the bottom. I am kind of procrastinating doing the yarn and the thread because I kind of want to do them both at the same time. This is the same thickness as the other one. This is just a simple attachment here. I attach it and then I'm gonna trim it to the right size. I still have no idea how I'm going to glaze and finish this. I have, honestly have not thought about it. So you can think about that now. What would you do? Oh, but they used oxides, didn't they? I'm gonna add a tiny little coil along the edge here to reinforce it, but also you can see there's a slight bevel here. I just realized something, the yarn ball is not gonna fit between these tabs. It's not gonna fit. And I still haven't added the yarn. No. I mean, I can shorten the tabs, but at what point does shortening them make them uh, non-functional? This was a major design flaw <laughs> that I didn't think about. Do I scrap it? The only thing I can think of is to scrap the locking mechanism. Okay, before we scrap it, let's see if it works. So there it's fitting, turn it. Yeah, that's so cool. Ah! What should I do? What do you guys think I should do? I really, I really wish I could get your feedback right now. I really wish I could get your feedback. Should I either A, keep the locking mechanism and just not put the yarn ball inside or B, kill the locking mechanism? What would you do? Let me know. Even though it's not helpful for me right now, I'm going to think about it. And meanwhile, I'm going to add the yarn to my yarn ball because that has to happen regardless. An abomination, an absolute abomination. It doesn't fit. In this project, like everything that can go wrong will go wrong. It like doesn't go all the way down. And with the added thickness of the glaze, it's just not gonna happen. So I'm going to remake the yarn ball. So I literally looked everywhere in my house and in my studio for a half sphere. This is the best I could do. There's a foot on it. So if you recall, 
what I did here. I'm gonna have to do the same thing, smooth out the bumps. So once again, I prepared a sphere for the yarn ball. I'll have to let that part dry out overnight again, so I moved on to finishing up the spool. Since I can't keep the locking mechanism, I'll just make a little flange that will rest inside the walls to keep the lid in place. Once that's finished, I can trim the lid to its final shape. So, this is fucking adorable. I still need to add my strings. I want to finish this one tonight and I can, but it maybe takes a little bit more time. Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the studio. I am anxious to finish these pieces today. I've got some girls coming in over later to take a class with me, so we need to get these done. The main focus is to finish this uh, yarn ball stuck together a little bit, so I'm gonna try and open it up. There we go. I'm so glad I redid this guy actually because I learned a lot from doing the original ball. This one's a little bit lopsided. The coils got a little bit squished and just don't look as three-dimensional. I'm fairly certain that the potters who go on the show get the brief at least a week in advance and then they can also do their trials in their home studio and I think that that's just a really great lesson for all of us in pottery is that the vast majority of the time, the first time that you do something is not going to be the best version of it. And if you are being ambitious like they do in the show, it's a very good idea to expect to have to redo something if you want it to turn out how it should turn out in the end. She fits thinking I could store like yarn balls in here. Because I've been convinced that my crazy timeline that I did in the last video is not even realistic to what they do in the show, I'm gonna go ahead and let these guys slow dry over the course of a week. So they have a little bit more time and a much, 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 much higher chance of survival. I'll see you on the other side when these guys are bisked and we do our decorations. So see you then. Okay, my pieces have survived the kiln. They're looking pretty good. I was really worried that some of these yarn pieces would pop off in the firing, but they didn't. So I'm happy about that. I do wish that these pieces were a little bit tighter of a fit. There's quite a gap, so it doesn't like make the impression at all that this is just one solid piece, but it still definitely, definitely looks like a ball of yarn. 
with my spool of thread, I'm really happy with this. There is one tiny hairline crack at the bottom. It's not on the inside though, so I think it's gonna be okay. It could potentially expand in the kiln. We'll see, we'll just have to see. So for decorating these guys, we have a couple of more options than we did last time because the contestants were also able to use oxides. So I do have, well, I have one oxide. <laughs> I have cobalt oxide, and I definitely want to use this because of my problems with the last challenge that my colors ended up turning pretty flat with the underglazes. So I think I'm going to use a combination of cobalt and because it's blue, I'm gonna use a blue underglaze and hopefully that will give it a little bit more dimension than the previous one. Also, it's important to keep in mind that this clay is not white. So I chose this more tan kind of speckly clay Partially just because I wanted to mix it up a little bit, but also it's gonna make the ends of the spools look more like wood because it's actually more of a wood color than white clay would be. I don't wanna paint them with any sort of underglaze because I'm worried that it's going to turn out like my cake stand in the last challenge, just really flat and boring. I'd rather just rely on the color and dimension of the clay. And so that's just going to be glazed transparent. So what we have to glaze today is the thread and the yarn. And with both of those, I think I'm going to just use cobalt and a cobalty colored blue underglaze. If you wanna get your hands on some of these underglazes, I'll have links to them down below. And this is a great opportunity for me to teach you how you apply cobalt oxide because it is just a powder. So why don't we start with our yarn ball? Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I spoke too soon. It fell off. Okay, but I think I can still stick this back on with a glaze, hopefully. It's gonna make applying the underglaze a little trickier, but that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna start with the other side. For cobalt, so it comes in, like this is cobalt oxide, and um, it comes in like a little powder. Just put a little bit into a dish. And then I'm going to add a tiny bit of water to the dish. The more water you add, the less strong the cobalt will be. I really need to buy some brushes because I don't have the best brushes. Ideally, you would have one that's a little bit bigger than this one. So what we're gonna do is just kind of mix it a little bit. And then the cobalt is always gonna sink to the bottom. So I'm trying not to grab directly from the bottom. I'm just gonna grab from the sides and from you know the water. And then painting it on is very similar to painting watercolors. So what's cool about oxides is they kind of settle into the crevices and you can always wipe them back as well. So they're really good at like showing off details. And I know it looks black now, believe it or not, it's going to be blue. It's especially really lovely if you put a white glaze on top of it because then it's like, that's like the classic cobalt look that you see in like antiques, like Delft pottery. So I think I'm just gonna like give it a really like kind of rough go over and then I'm going to wipe it back. And then with cobalt, you really need to be careful with it. So cobalt is very toxic uh, material. You wanna be really careful to avoid breathing in the powder. This is also why we want to be working with it while it's wet. I try not to expose it too much to my skin, so that's why I'm having it on a turntable so I don't need to hold the piece while I'm painting it. Another thing you should be careful about is then disposing of the cobalt. Make sure you're putting it into some sort of um, filter that it's not getting into our water supply. Cobalt mining, it's kind of a touchy subject because there's been documented instances of slavery and child abuse in cobalt mines. So I'm not gonna tell you whether or not to use cobalt. I use cobalt occasionally. And I would also say that the vast, vast majority of cobalt that is being used and produced is for electric vehicles. Yeah, it's something that you do need to be aware of that the production of cobalt or the rather the mining of cobalt is currently unfortunately problematic. But keep in mind, even if you're not buying cobalt oxide, cobalt might be in your glazes, especially if you're using blues or blacks, you know, make your own decisions, but it's important to know where our resources come from. Use these resources responsibly. And the cool thing about cobalt is a little bit goes a long way. Like I bought 100 grams years ago and I'm still working my way through it. So 
Luckily, you don't need much. So what I recommend, this watery uh, cobalt, I'm just going to dispose in um, my filter. So I'm not going to let this get into <laughs> uh, nature. I'm going to dispose of it properly. Um, and if you wanna understand more about how to do that, go look into my water systems video. But this one, because of the toxicity of cobalt and because of the preciousness of cobalt, what I usually do is I will just leave this now to dry out. So this is now going to be an exclusively cobalt dish. I haven't used cobalt since I moved to the studio, so that's why I didn't have one before, but now I'm just going to leave this as a cobalt dish. The water in there is going to dry out and it's going to just turn back into powder and I can just store it safely with my cobalt container here. That's how I would do it. I'm not saying it's the best or only way to do it, but that makes me feel safe and like I'm not wasting a single drop of cobalt. <laughs> so I'm going to try and add some dimension with my underglazes as well by watering them down and also wiping them back as well, I think. I'm having a crisis here in my head because I'm wondering if I should actually glaze with white. It sort of looks a little bit textured. It almost looks soft. What I could do is dip this, the body in white and then just dip the ends in transparent. Should we try it? We're done. Very excited, very nervous. Eleven keepsake boxes now face the judgment of Keith and Rich. Potters, I make no secret of the fact that I think your keepsake boxes are beautiful, but I'm not the one judging, these two are. So let's get on with it. Please bring your keepsake box up to the judges. Here he is. Honestly, super pleased with how they turned out. We're gonna talk about positives and negatives. We're gonna do a self-critique. Let's start with our yarn ball. Positives. The piece that fell off got re-glued and it now sticks just fine. And the box closes no matter which way you face it. Although obviously because of the yarn, it only lines up in one spot. 
I'm, I'm fairly neutral on the color. Same with this one. It's not exactly what I had in mind, but I suppose it's what I should have expected based on the treatment that I was doing. That was a spontaneous decision. I'm not mad at it. Cons is that um, I'm not super happy with how it closes. It's not a tight close. You can see like very clearly, especially in certain spots. Some, some other spots are tighter. Um, but in certain spots, you can see very clearly that there's a line here. I'm not even sure if I know what I know now about making this piece, if I could make the line more subtle. I think it's just the nature of the design. Other con, you see, it's kind of wobbly. It doesn't have that satisfying close that I look for in uh, boxes and jars. But you guys let me know how you feel about the color. And I'm glad that I added the cobalt. I guess I wish I had wiped away less of the cobalt. So where it gets darker, you can start to see the added cobalt is adding more dimension to it. I, I'm going to give myself a seven out of 10 for this one. Maybe that's generous, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Maybe I'm being too generous on myself because um, I did struggle with this one. Now let's talk about oh, our spool. Overall, I'm really happy with my spool. I think it's actually really cute. And I was thinking that this could also function as like a small table or a plant stand. And then, you know, you'd be surprised to open it up and there's some storage on the inside. I feel the same way about the color on this as I did with the yarn ball. Six out of 10 on color, let's say. In hindsight, I think it would have been cool to add an additional color on the inside, maybe like a lilac or something like that, I think would be really cool. Cons is that we do have some cracking. Along the rim where the thread coil peeled away from the actual body. So we just have two cracks here. They don't take away from the functionality of the piece, but they are there. <laughs> we do have one small crack at the bottom here, which I noticed during the bisque and a little bit on the bottom as well. Oh, I didn't even notice. Wait, we have two cracks now. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Not just one crack, but two cracks on the bottom. Doesn't go through. But uh, yeah, that's a bummer. Flat building is really hard. I just, I have some kiln wash on the bottom that I need to sand off. So that's what this white stuff is. Oh, and let's, ta-da. It fits. <laughs> so I have already started next week's challenge. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. That will come out in a couple of weeks. In the very beginning, when I shot the first one, I was trying to really rush these projects, but I think going forward, I'm actually going to make these pieces as it actually makes sense as a ceramicist working in their studio, like not under the time pressure. I mean, I'm still timing myself for that, but I'm not going to speed dry them. So they will come out a little bit longer after the episodes actually air. Hopefully that's all right for you guys. So we'll see how many of these I can do. I would love it if you guys also participated in this challenge. If you post anything on Instagram or on YouTube, I will definitely be highlighting um, other people who do these projects over on my Instagram. So if you wanna take part, I think it would be really fun if you want. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye friends.